Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. We are here live from the Virginia studios at Kardec Radio. Yes, the headquarters are located in Northern Virginia. It's the metropolitan area of Washington, D.C. Whenever you are in the area, you're welcome to come and visit us and visit the very headquarters of Kardec Radio. And who knows, we may record something with you. By the way, if you're listening to us and you would like to help us at Kardec Radio, there's one thing that we need the most, and this is, recording of spiritist messages if you have spiritist books in english and you think you have a good voice we think everyone has good voice but if you think so go ahead record it even in your cell phone your smartphone send it to us to kardec radio at gmail.com we'll be happy to edit it and play in our shows. We're going to play the very messages. We need lots of spiritist messages, voiceovers of them here for the programs. And also, you know, this coming April, April 23rd, the United States Spiritist Council is organizing the 10th U.S. Spiritist Symposium. Yes, it's going to happen in San Diego, California on Saturday, April 23rd, and you're invited to join. There is a very symbolic registration fee, and the theme of the year is just amazing because it talks about um, what? Love. What else do we need? What else do we need, dear listener? But love. Yes, that's true. Love. And you can go to the website, Spiritus symposium.org and get information on the very uh, symposium registration and the whole nine yards. It's about love. The program is already available and you can get a hold of the, the list of speakers, everything. It's about the transformative power of love. The 10th U.S. The Spiritist Symposium in San Diego, California, 2016. It's going to uh, have like a, a workshop in an auditorium. In the, the other auditorium, there will be um, several different talks. Speakers from different areas of the country are going to get together talking about the beauty of the features of love. Yeah, you should join us. We think uh, it's worthwhile getting to know more friends who are like-minded. The registration is very simple. Just go to spiritissymposium.org. So symbolic. It's only $20 for a whole day of amazing conversations, talks, workshops. And you know, if you have a child, bring it on. Bring your child on to the symposium. Uh, children from second grade to 12th grade only pay $10. They have a whole day program organized by Bernadette Liao, and it's going to happen in Liberty Station Conference Center. Isn't that amazing? You can bring your child. The child's going to be uh, meeting other kids. They are also going to have their own activities under the same theme of the transformative power of love. Just join us, and it's going to be an amazing experience. Also, for those who are willing to help others who are living a very difficult life, like uh, the children who are orphans in Mozambique, Africa, you can help. You can help by logging in, uh, by actually con just browsing the website first. Take a look, fraternitywithoutborders.org. There, you're going to find a single opportunity to sponsor a child, and this child, from there on, is going to receive meals, education, medical care, psychological care, the whole nine yards of what people really need to live a 
decent, dignified life. Go to fraternitywithoutborders.org and get to know more information. This coming March, we are going to have a special program with Dr. Indra Moreira talking about his very field expeditions as a physician in the very uh, country of Mozambique. And you can join as well. Uh, they have uh, three expeditions a year. You can join them and help them out. Just go to the website, fraternitywithoutborders.org. Get to know more information, sponsor a kid. Today, the program is about spiritual immunization. Dear listener, we're living in a world of progress. We're progressing in our planet Earth. But we still have a long way. And the good spirits never let us down, never abandon us. On the contrary, they always find opportunities to help us out. Today, we're going to share with you a message that can be life-changing. It's about spiritual immunization. You know, when we are a kid, we, since babies, you know, babyhood, we go take vaccines, and we get immunized, so we protect ourselves from great tro trouble in the future. Spiritually, we need to do the same. And you may be asking, what do I need to do to immunize myself spiritually? Well, I'm not going to say it's simple, but it's groundbreaking. The message that the Spirit Emmanuel psychographed through Divaldo Franco is unbelievable because it shares with us the ins and outs of spiritual immunization and through that we get to know more about how to live a better life. Sometimes the obstacles we're facing in our lives are not due to previous lives uh, issues. Sometimes they are due to the very uh, aversions we have created for ourselves in this very life. What am I talking about? You may be asking, right? Yes. By the way, if you have any question or comment, you can call us live at 858-769-4705 or go to the blogtalkradio.com slash radio. We have a chat room and we are here. We can listen from you. You can share your comments and your questions, and we'll be always happy to listen from you. By the way, I'm going to say hi to Fred Govea, our dear friend from New York. Thank you for your message this morning, Fred. I know this message is very, very transformative. So we're going to kickstart the program by listening to the message. And soon after, I have audio files breaking down the very message we're going to discuss about it. It's not simple, but it's something we need to work upon. So let us listen to this spiritual immunization. And again, I'm going to thank Steve Shepard, who kindly uh, recorded this message for us so we could enjoy this vaccination for the spirit. Today, we're being vaccinated, dear listener. Let us listen. Enjoy. Spiritual Immunization Emmanuel Chico Xavier But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Jesus, Matthew 5, verse 44. In fact, we have two classes of opponents, those who disagree with us and those others whom we have raised with our own culture of intolerance. The former are inevitable. They come from all walks of life, especially when the individual is moving forward in the trials of elevation. Neither Jesus lived or lives without them. 
The latter, however, are those whose appearance we can and should avoid. For this, let us enumerate some of the losses that we will certainly acquire when we create aversions in our way. Outbreaks of forceful vibrations. Centers of systematic opposition. Silent threats. Closed doors to spontaneous contests. Opinions almost always biased regarding us. Unjustified suspicions. Purposes of retaliation. Free antithepes. Preventions and sarcasm. Hassles. Spiritual shadows. Any of the related plots in this list of disadvantages would be enough to embitter a large range of our life, annihilating our precious opportunities or reducing our efficiency, peace, fulfillment, and joy of living. It is easy to infer that when we create opponents, we only lesion ourselves. It is also very important to know to tolerate them and to respect them whenever they arise against us. Thus, we understand that when Jesus admonished us to love our enemies, he was very far from inducing us to be an accomplice of evil, but it gave us the ideal formula of balance in the peace of immunization. Source, Book, Sefa de Luz by Emmanuel, psychographed by Chico Xavier. Chapter 48. Yes, dear listener, what a striking message. And I say this because I remember the first time I read this message. And... I was so surprised because I never thought about the topic. When you think about the fact that we need to prevent and protect ourselves to the level that Emmanuel describes, it's really a very revolutionary idea. Emmanuel talks to us, he quotes first from Jesus from the very moment in which he told us that we need to love our enemies. That's quite interesting because he says, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. It's it's a message that we kind of understand, but I think it's one of the hardest and especially when we feel the enemies are within ourselves. But then he, as a good teacher, Emmanuel, starts breaking down the message into more understandable and very practical components. So let us let us listen to this very first component of the message. In fact, we have two classes of opponents, those who disagree with us and those others whom we have raised with our own culture of intolerance. The former are inevitable. They come from all walks of life, especially when the individual is moving forward in the trials of elevation. Neither Jesus lived or lives without them. The latter, however, are those whose appearance we can and should avoid. For this, let us enumerate some of the losses that we will certainly acquire when we create aversions in our way. Ah, uh, okay. So it says, there are two classes of opponents, those who disagree with us, period. And so they happen to happen, and that's it, and those whom we created. Why, he says, because of our own culture of intolerance. And he says, the first ones who disagree with us are inevitable. They come from all different walks of life. And it's just a matter of evolution. And he mentions to us, 
Even Jesus doesn't stay without him to date. And it's so true because to date, people don't understand Jesus. They still talk bad about him and he hasn't done anything bad to these people. That's what shocks us the most is that they, they take uh, the pathway of uh, landering Jesus. And if we ask them, what has Jesus done to you? Nothing, but I don't like him, etc. So you can imagine, dear listener, that if Jesus, the most perfect spirit that has come to the earth, has opponents, who are we not to have them, right? Problem Emmanuel is saying is that when we create opponents due to our own attitude in life, that's when uh, our lives become more complicated. And he says quite clearly, um, we should avoid those who come their way just creating opposition, but we need to prevent the creation of aversions in our own way. And as a wonderful teacher, Emmanuel describes to us our very, he practically outlines line by line the things that we do that make uh, our lives more complicated because with those attitudes, we are creating enemies. So let us listen to this very excerpt so we can start talking about it. Outbreaks of forceful vibrations, centers of systematic opposition, silent threats, closed doors to spontaneous contests, opinions almost always biased regarding us, unjustified suspicions, purposes of retaliation, free antithepes, preventions and sarcasm, hassles, spiritual shadows. Um, very interesting, because I think this is the hardest part of the message. Let's go one by one. He says the following. For this, he says, we should avoid creating opponents. When they happen spontaneously, we can't do anything, but when we create them, that's a problem. And he says, for this reason, we're going to enumerate some of the losses that we'll certainly acquire when we create aversions in our way. So when we are intolerant towards people's imperfections, difficulties, limitations, and we are very, um, you know, transparent in telling them that we don't accept them as they are, the consequences can be very difficult. And he says to us quite clearly, we're going to experience outbreaks of forceful vibrations, centers of systematic opposition, silent threats. It's very interesting because when he, he talks about vibrations, opposition, silent threats, he's talking about vibrational exchange. People start thinking bad about us, and we start feeling it. We resent it. We feel it. Sometimes we have headaches. Sometimes we are feeling well, and suddenly we feel terrible. Because we are exchanging vibrations, we have people who are thinking bad about ourselves, and this is what he says about silent threats. I remember very much one person who was divorced, had a child, and couldn't really uh, let go of the fact that her husband wasn't with her any longer. <clears throat> and it's understandable. It takes time. But he remarried, and they had a child a boy. She had a girl with him, and with the new marriage, she had a boy. She says, she said to us, 
you know, every day, think of that boy, and if I could, I would kill him. We know she wouldn't physically, but spiritually, she was already sending those threats to the boy. And the boy, sincerely, doesn't have anything to do with the story. Now, this is exactly what Emmanuel is telling us, silent threats. I remember one day somebody came to a friend of mine and said, you know, I spent a whole year feeling so jealous of you that every day I would wake up and you were the first person I had in mind. And I was so jealous. I hated you so much. But years went by and that diluted over the years. My friend was shocked when that person told her that because she had never imagined that just minding her business would create so much commotion. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. She started thinking, what have I done to push that button inside of that person? The other thing Emmanuel says is, and this is interesting, uh, if we keep creating opponents because of our intolerance, we will experience closed doors to a spontaneous contest. You know those feelings when you want to create a new project, you start, it's a wonderful idea, but you find all the doors are closed to you. Mm -hmm. Consequences of the vibrational opposition we have created. He says one more, if we create those animals due to our intolerance, we will uh, experience opinions almost always biased regarding us. Unjustified suspicions. Purposes of retaliation. Free antipathies. Preventions and sarcasm. Hassles. Spiritual shadows. He talks about obsession. We may experience even obsession when we create opponents due to our intolerance. There is a case by Kardec in the Spiritist magazine. Uh, at Kardec's time, it's a case in which, true case, two sisters lived by themselves in a house. And one day, they started experiencing spirit wrappings, spirit, you know, Tables would f start flying around her ha their house. Uh, pins would start flying the kitchen. True spirit commotion. So they called. They called. I mean, they didn't have a phone, but they asked Kardec to help them out. Kardec brought their case to the mediumistic meeting, asking the spirits to either present themselves or get the information from the good spirits. What was that all about? And it's amazing. Because the spirits came themselves, the ones that were creating it. And they said, you know, we're doing that because these two sisters, they gossip the whole day about everyone. So we want to teach them a lesson. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's sad. It's sad. But it's true. It's exactly what Emmanuel is talking about. He's saying, if we create enemies, opponents, because of our intolerance, gossiping is a byproduct of intolerance. Because we are not respecting people's rights to be the way they want to be. And we start creating opposition in the spiritual realm. Do you want to hear another case? I'm going to tell you another case. In a book by Andre Lewis, it's already in English, named Sex and Destiny. By the way, it's one of the most beautifully dramatic books that Andre Lewis has written through Chico Xavier. You can buy it at Amazon.com or it is a of America dot com, sex and destiny, two families 
big drama, but beautifully solved by the good spirits. It's beautiful. But in that book, we get to know something quite interesting. Very, very interesting. There is this girl, okay, girl, that um, she is in a coma. She's there in the hospital. Her father is seated by her side reading the gospel. She is in a coma. You know, dear listener, when people are in coma, the body doesn't respond, but the spirit is fully awake. They listen to what's happening around. They think freely. And that's exactly what Andrea Louis shows to us. After that car accident, she is in a coma. But as a spirit, she's thinking just like everybody else. So she is thinking to herself. She doesn't know what's happening to her physical body. She's not aware she's in a hospital. But she's deeply engaged into her emotional drama. She's thinking, my sister, Marina, she uh, stole my fiancé. She is really the reason why my life is a living hell. So she's really sending those thoughts of negativity. And you may be asking, who is listening to us? Her father is not listening to her because... He's incarnated, he's not a medium, but he has a spirit companion, a spirit, a discarnate spirit, who likes him and her very much. They're like, he's like a spirit family, a family spirit, but he's not very evolved. He's listening to her. She's not aware he's there, but he's listening to her. He can listen to her thoughts. And because he's not very evolved, he takes, he takes the very um, anger from that woman to himself. And he says, don't worry, I'm going to avenge you. This sister of yours is going to pay for what she's done. He leaves the hospital. He's a discarnate spirit. He can also go anywhere. Andrea Lewis shows to us in this book, Sex and Destiny, that this spirit, in this purpose of avenging, he goes see Marina, the sister. She's there. Of course, she's not behaving well, so her spiritual doors are open wide, and it's not very difficult for him to set her off. And what happens next? This discarnate spirit comes closer to the sister Marina and starts whispering in her ears, you are a whore, you are a murderer, you are the one who creates problems and start creating all of these ideas, undermining the self-esteem of that woman to the point that because of her guilt, she's vulnerable because of her guilt. So that's why I'm telling you, guilt's no good to anybody. If you're feeling guilty, you're not solving any problem. Self-pity does also not solve the problem. On the contrary, just open the doors for you to attract these vibrations from spirits who are not very evolved. Because she is vulnerable and she's guilty and feeling guilty, she has this psychiatric moment, psychopathologic moment in which she enters a crisis of self-injury and she's taken to a psychiatry ward. Wow. From there on, the spirit who is obsessing her in the name of justice for the sister who is in coma and has no idea whatsoever that she's in a coma herself, right? He asks his friends to come and help him keep that sister in the psychiatric ward. Dear listener, this is precisely what Emmanuel is telling us. When we, due to our um, choices of intolerance, 
of disrespect to others. We create opponents in both realms of life. We are going to experience spiritual shadows, which in other words is obsession. It's not fun. You want another case? I'm going to give you another case. The spirits are asking us to lay it out, several cases. There's another case which you can find in the book Heaven and Hell, and we studied it this past Wednesday with the help of Luciana Nicoliello. It's the, a case that you can find even in audio format. You know it, right? The cases of the book Heaven and Hell are in audio format. We had 54 friends around the world helping us record the cases. Just go to kardecradio.com and there is Spiritist Audio Books and Heaven and Hell. This is the case of a spirit who was a suicide, okay? And the spirit of a suicide, Antoine Bell. He committed suicide and then he comes to Kardec to tell us the reason why he committed suicide. He talks about a previous life. I'm not going to tell you everything because it's worthwhile listening to it. But Antoine Bell, in this case, he says, bottom line, he committed suicide as a byproduct of a spiritual obsession that had roots in previous lives. And the spirit who was obsessing him is the father of his victim from another life. Stop. What is it, Manisa, you're talking about? Yes. In a previous life, Antoine Bell did something. I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. But in a previous life, Antoine Bell did something very bad to a man. This man died. In the spiritual realm, he forgave Antoine Bell. But the father, his father, the father of the victim, did not forgive him. And wanted to do justice with his own hands. So he kept following the spirit of Antoine Bell in the spiritual realm and later in that reincarnation. Can you imagine? We do something for somebody and they don't avenge us, but somebody who loved them avenges. us. Ah, mama mia, it's like the mafia, the Italian mafia. Yes, it is. It's a little worse than that because when they are discarnated, they can infiltrate in many places unless we raise our vibrations. We don't want to scare you out, but this is the spirit is teaching. Very clear, very straightforward. There is more for us to discuss in this message, but we're going to give you a break. Food for thought. Let's breathe in and out. Let's go for a break, dear listener. After the break, we have a lot more to share with you. It's very exciting. And if you have any question, just call us at 858-769-4705 or write your comment or question to cardiacradio at gmail.com or at the chat room of Block Talk Radio. If you're listening to this on demand, feel free to keep sending your comments by email to us. We are always happy to listen from you wherever you are in this world. Right now, a break. And after the break, much more. We're being vaccinated spiritually today. I know it hurts a little bit, but you know, at the end of the day, we're going to be stronger. This is it. A break, and we'll be right back. We will return to our program after these messages. Hey kids! Did you know that Kardec Radio is now for you? We, Mark and Carol, are going to tell you the most beautiful, exciting, fun stories ever. All with messages of love and hope that will make your heart smile. Tune in to Kardec Radio Mondays beginning October 5th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for Stories from the Heart at Kardec Radio for Kids. Of course, if you miss us, you can always find us on demand at kardecradio.com. If you like our stories, write to us or send your drawings to kardecforkids at gmail.com. We can't wait to see you then. Bye. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. If you 
missed out on any previous shows? No worries. We have an on-demand section of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website at www.cardacradio.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Help prevent suicide by reading and sharing these books with others. Two great books are available to help in this Kardec Radio campaign to prevent suicide. Suicide, All You Need to Know by the international spiritist speaker Richard Simonetti. You can buy your copy at www.roundtablepublishing-uk.com. Also, Memoirs of a Suicide by the medium Yvonne Pereira. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.com. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Kardec Radio now offers more programs during the week and weekends. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can follow the beautiful program God at Home with Francisca Kranz and the British Spiritist Community. They will brighten your days by doing a God at Home meeting wherever you are in the world while teaching you how to do the same in your own home with your family and friends. Every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will hear incredibly inspirational Spiritist Talks directly broadcasted by Spiritist Network. There will be true educational moments to carry out to immortality. Every Saturday, live interviews, bridging health and spiritism with the host Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. You may ask questions to the interviewed guests by calling 858-769-4705. And every Sunday, tune in the Spiritist Awareness at Kardec Radio. You will hear a series of segments on a diversity of Spiritist topics. Kardec will broadcast the Spiritist Moment with Kirsten DeMello, the reading of the Spiritist Book by John DeRosa and Steve Shepard, Spiritism in Your Life with Drs. Marco and Joyce Magalhães, Spiritism and the Gospel with Luis Sergio Marotta, Spiritist Education for Youth and Children with Bernadette Leal, Spiritist Music with James Marotta, Neuroscience and Spiritism with Dr. Vanessa Anceloni, and many more segments coming soon. Enjoy it all and nurse your soul with Kardec Radio. And now we return to our program. Ay, ay, ay. Yes, it's our spiritual immunization. We're being vaccinated this morning at Kardec Radio. Ouch. Yes, the pinching is not fun, but it's necessary. We really need to be vaccinated. And Emmanuel through Chico Chavez brings to us a message that is revolutionary. I sincerely have not read anything like that. So clear, so practical, and so um, transformative. In regards to how we immunize ourselves, we need to immunize ourselves. And Emmanuel tells us we need to pay attention to when we are creating enemies. Sometimes because we're talking too much. Forgive me, but at Kardec Radio, we have to talk. But you can also talk. You can also send us your comments, your questions. And we're always happy to listen from you. But, you know, sometimes we are in relationships and People approach us and we're like, blah, blah, blah about ourselves. And we're creating this, man, oppositions because of our intolerance. We we don't tolerate other people speaking. We are always the ones who have to give the last word. We're always thinking we're the only ones who are right, etc. And thus we create billions of problems in our lives. And that's exactly what I'm mean saying. Before I go back to the message, our dear friend Mark Lewis, thank you, Mark, for being always at Kardec Radio and for sharing your precious comments. I'm going to read what you read and then we're going to comment. Feel free to keep typing in and discussing it. Mark Lewis says, 
By the way, Mark, let us know where you're coming from. Just because you're always here with us, we are not sure where you're from, if you don't mind sharing with us. I believe one, says Mark Lewis, I believe one must separate happiness as a result of material accomplishments from spiritual accomplishments. I think it is important to differentiate happiness when people are successful or safe or lucky from when people are happy or satisfied when they reach a level of comfort with their faith. As far as I can tell, the former sustains sanity, the first feeds depression and emptiness. I think you got it. I think that's it. Um, and I like very much when you say differentiate happiness when people are successful, or safe, or lucky from when people are happy or satisfied when they reach a level of comfort with their faith. You are so right, Mark, because this is the case of depression nowadays. We have lived many lives, many, um, understanding that we are happy when we succeed materially speaking, when we have fame, when we have, uh, you know, glory in the material realm. But then, in this life, we find that it's leading us to emptiness because we may reach the top of the hill, but we still feel empty inside, and then we feel depressed. And all the scientific studies show exactly what you say. When people rely upon their unperishing faith, immortal faith, the one that is not blind, they are sane. We lose sanity when we um, get desperate, lose our calmness, as says in the gospel according to spiritism, when we think those passing things, the material things are more important. We we thank you very much for your comment. And there you go regarding spiritual immunization. When we focus on the immortal and everlasting aspects of life and avoid creating opposition in our lives, Due to temporary passing things, every time we are with people, let me let me share this with you, dear listener. Our lives are all about relationships. Okay, when we um, have relationships in our lives that are constantly bombarding us with opposition we will find trouble every step of the way. So we need to think, what can I do to make this better? Sometimes letting go. And I mean, letting go of uh, material expectations, even in our relationships. For example, a wife or a husband who is expecting that the partner is... Um, uh, needs to give this, that, and the other. When we let go of those expectations and simply focus on giving of ourselves, I know it's not easy. But as Mark Lou is saying here, many people get depressed because they expect that they're going to get married and they're going to have a beautiful marriage and when they don't find it. But you know, it's not about the la la land that we'll never find on the earth and even for those people who play themselves on Facebook as the happiest couples they have their struggles too they do we cannot think we're the only ones who don't because it's human nature as a, a, a psychologist I know that every single couple has theirs you know, they are moments of struggles and crisis. Everyone does. It's normal. So Mark Lewis is reminding us of a safe haven. Focus on our faith. What is your faith, dear listener? What is it? I'm not asking you about a religion. 
but your core principles, your core spiritual principles. Let's go back to the message. Okay. We are going to play right now a part of the message in which Emmanuel says, what happens when we create opposition? Let's listen to this two parts again and go from there. Outbreaks of forceful vibrations, centers of systematic opposition, silent threats, closed doors to spontaneous contests, opinions almost always biased regarding us, unjustified suspicions, purposes of retaliation, free antithepies, preventions and sarcasm, hassles, spiritual shadows. Yeah, this is the part we've just discussed, and we're going to add one more part that Emmanuel says. Any of the related plots in this list of disadvantages would be enough to embitter a large range of our life, annihilating our precious opportunities or reducing our efficiency, peace, fulfillment, and joy of living. It is easy to infer that when we create opponents, we only lesion ourselves. Ay, ay, ay. Is that true? He says, any of the related plots in this list of disadvantages would be enough to embed a large range of our life, annihilating our precious opportunities or reducing our efficiency, peace, fulfillment, and joy of living. Mm. Ay, ay, ay. So not everything is about karma, previous lives. It's about this life. This very life. Like we said, the case is before the very break case of the woman who was in a coma thinking of her hatred towards her sister who you know stole her fiance and then the spirit who is nearby her listening to her taking her side and avenging her creating this mental illness I'm not saying that he created it but he triggered the mental imbalance that already existed in the mind of her sister and then she she was admitted in a psychiatric hospital. Mm-hmm. In that very life, of course, are there previous lives roots? Yes. But in this life, we can make a choice. So since we started this show with Jesus' message, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, dear listeners. Let's start doing it today. Let's pray for those who don't understand us. And let's make amends. Make a list. We're still at the beginning of the year. 2016. And that's a beautiful resolution. Reconcile. Reconciliation. It's so needed. Go after the people whom you have misunderstandings. Don't feel shy. Don't feel ashamed. On the contrary. Feel the joy of the courage of reconciling. Go there. Don't ask that people understand you or forgive you. Just say, please forgive me. I was immature. I didn't know better. I was not feeling better. Whatever excuse, it was wrong. And you don't have to forgive me, but I would like to let you know that I am fully aware that I could have done better. And I do not, uh, I would like that we Make amends, but don't force the person to do so, okay? Just keep it. Keep the person in your list of prayers. But don't let yourself be discouraged. If people by any chance, they do not, you know, forgive you, that's okay. Forgive, forget, keep going. Today is the day in which we're concluding that we need to change our attitude. We need to avoid creating obstacles and opponents in our lives. And the menu says more. It's easy to infer that when we create opponents, we lesion our own selves. Stop. 
stop. We're living in a world, and you tell me, dear listener, if you think, if you agree or disagree. We're living in a world in which people think that it's beautiful to, and forgive me for saying this, but it became almost like a caricature. Donald Trump, some people think it's beautiful that he is putting down other people, he's undermining people, he's creating true opposition for himself, and he's lesioning, hurting himself. What for? To become the president of the United States? And this is not a political discourse, but it's an evaluation. You are going to um, achieve this high position Paying this high price of creating dissension around the world to the point that the United Kingdom has to sit down and talk about a petition against him when the people of the United Kingdom don't want him there at all. This is exactly what Emmanuel is talking to us about. I wish we could hand this message to him and say, my friend... What for? We don't need you to create this war against the world to become the president of the United States. You know better. You have been a successful man in many ways. You have given employment to so many people. Thank you very much. But why are you going to hurt yourself like that? You don't need it. And we don't need a the future president of the United States to be so oppositional to everything and everyone, so intolerant. It doesn't feel good, but we are living in a world in which some people think it's beautiful to create enemies. It's beautiful to be intolerant. But Emmanuel is saying, in reality, it's very, very bad very, very hurtful and has consequences that can delay our uh, progress for quite a while. So you may be asking, what do we do if we have already created them? This is how Emmanuel addresses solution. That's why we love Emmanuel. He's very practical. He wrote these books a while ago in the 20th century, but they are so up to date. You're so practical. Let's listen to the solution. He says, what do we do? It is also very important to know to tolerate them and to respect them whenever they arise against us. Thus, we understand that when Jesus admonished us to love our enemies, he was very far from inducing us to be an accomplice of evil, but it gave us the ideal formula of balance in the peace of immunization. Source, book, Sefa de Luz, by Emmanuel, psychographed by Chico Xavier. Chapter 48. Did I give you some time to think about his... um solution? Yes. He said, it's very tolerate them and to respect them whenever they arise against us. So he's saying, when we create opponents, we lesion ourselves. And if they come against us, we need to be tolerant and respectful of them. He doesn't say we have to agree with them, but he says, stop the cycle of Intolerance. Somebody has to put a stop. Somebody has to put a stop. As we're talking about, uh, you know, the attitude in politics nowadays, you know, we need to think. If you are going, it's a, it's a very common strategy in politics that you make yourself big and great by diminishing somebody else, by undermining others. We're yet to see somebody who doesn't get into that cycle of intolerance, 
we we are looking forward to those who themselves great and big just by being who they are and they don't need to put others down. You may be thinking I'm talking about uh, utopia on earth. No, we are talking about progress on earth. One day it's going to happen and we need to think about it. The peacemakers, as Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers for they are going to inherit the earth. The earth is evolving. Take a look at that very chapter in the book, The Gospel According to Spiritism by Allan Kardec. What does it mean to inherit the earth? It means that the earth is evolving and those who are going to remain here are the ones who are willing to reconcile, to be better themselves and to make amends, etc., etc. So, it's our single opportunity today, immunizing ourselves. He says, the ideal formula Jesus gave us to be in balance with the peace of immunization. Immunizing ourselves by tolerating, respecting, by praying for others. Does it mean we are cowards? If somebody comes and, you know, mistreat us and we don't respond, no. The other day, I tell you the truth. I experienced something quite unique. I was with some friends at a restaurant, baby Virginia, my husband, Carlos. And you know how sometimes they're too fast. You're still eating and then they ask you if you want dessert or coffee or the check. And we're still eating. I was focusing on Virginia eating. And for those who don't know, Virginia is my two-year-old daughter. And then the, the, the waitress approached us and asked, do you want some coffee? Do you want some dessert? Do you want the check? And then I turned to her and said, we're not done yet. Oh, my Lord. But I didn't say anything bad. It wasn't like rude. But I could have been kinder. Sincerely, I could have looked at her and said, oh, I'm sorry, but, you know, let us finish, and then we will ask you for more. I, I could have been, like, knowing that she wasn't all too well, but I simply was, like, you know, playing, like, we're not done yet. From that moment on, she was so rude with all of us. Everybody was, like, shocked. Her attitude from there on changed to worse. And then I told myself, hmm, I'm not blaming myself saying that, you know, she's like that because I did something bad, but I should have been a little more tolerant to her. You know, it's her job. She's working. We're just enjoying themselves. And I created opposition just because of my intolerance. You see? I know it was a little bit of uh, discomfort, but it was a discomfort. She took like the creamer when we asked for coffee and she threw on the table. People were like shocked. But I said, you know, this is exactly what Emmanuel tells us. Do not create opponent. And sometimes just because of the tone of the voice, we create opponents. Not everybody is, you know, prepared to take our our intolerance and simply say, okay, ma'am, I didn't say anything bad to her. People would claim, no, no, you didn't do anything wrong. But deep inside, I know I could have been more tolerant and be less blunt and say, you know, we just need a little more time, please. That's it. You see, that's exactly what Emmanuel is saying. And, and, and from there on, we experience a little bit of discomfort just because of that. How often that happens in our jobs, communities, just because of a word that is not well spoken or because of attitude, etc. So we need to polish ourselves, if I may say this. Jesus is asking us to refine our emotions.
emotional intelligence, our spiritual intelligence, by becoming more tolerant, understanding, respectful. It's as if we're treating kids, children, other people as little kids. You know, little kids come to us and they say, no, we don't feel upset because, we know, they're just little kids. It's just like that. If we could do that all the time with others, adults, our lives would be much easier. I'm going to play the whole message again for those who are entering Kardec Radio right now. And before we wrap up the program, let me allow you to listen to the full message of Emmanuel through Chico Xavier again. Spiritual Immunization Emmanuel Chico Xavier But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Jesus, Matthew 5, verse 44. In fact, we have two classes of opponents, those who disagree with us and those others whom we have raised with our own culture of intolerance. The former are inevitable. They come from all walks of life, especially when the individual is moving forward in the trials of elevation. Neither Jesus lived or lives without them. The latter, however, are those whose appearance we can and should avoid. For this, let us enumerate some of the losses that we will certainly acquire when we create aversions in our way. Outbreaks of forceful vibrations. Centers of systematic opposition. Silent threats. Closed doors to spontaneous contests opinions almost always biased regarding us, unjustified suspicions, purposes of retaliation, free antithepies, preventions and sarcasm, hassles, spiritual shadows. Any of the related plots in this list of disadvantages would be enough to embitter a large range of our life annihilating our precious opportunities or reducing our efficiency, peace, fulfillment, and joy of living. It is easy to infer that when we create opponents, we only lesion ourselves. It is also very important to know to tolerate them and to respect them whenever they arise against us. Thus, we understand that when Jesus admonished us to love our enemies, he was very far from inducing us to be an accomplice of evil, but it gave us the ideal formula of balance in the peace of immunization. Source, book, Sefa de Luz by Emmanuel, psychographed by Chico Xavier, Chapter 48. food for thought. How do you feel? Are you sore from the pinch of the needle for our vaccination today? We may be sore because the message is uh, very strong, but needed. Thank God you already have the spiritual vaccine. Spiritism is really a groundbreaking message from the higher spirits. It changes our lives completely. It creates such a beautiful um, opportunity for us to grow into progress and to prevent problems. So what is the bottom line for us today? Let us immunize ourselves by tolerating and respecting the, even the opponents. 
We need to tolerate and respect. And you know, when the spirits talk about tolerate, they are not saying that we should, uh, um, you know, pretend that we agree with them. No, we should just respect that people have different ways of being. And sometimes they have the right to be against us. We're not saying if they hurt us physically or etc. we're going to simply let it be. But we're not going to create more commotion. It's hard. Because it's so good to feel supported. It's so good to feel that we are understood. But as the beginning of the message said, even Jesus, to date, has opponents. And Jesus is the, the master, the loving presence on the earth. It's a lesson for us to learn. Let us learn it, dear listener, and let us do our best. This is just mid-February 2016. And even if it's later in this year, or next year, or the following year, it's always a good opportunity for us to go make amends, reconcile within and outside of ourselves. Ask for forgiveness and keep on going. And forgive even those who in the spiritual realm don't know any better and are being used as true, as Emmanuel says in other messages, the good spirits allow the obsessors to be in our lives because they serve the purpose of creating greater strength in ourselves. How so? Very simple. Just like uh, these uh, shots of vaccine, they enter our system and we create immunity we become stronger. That's exactly what happens. Today, we're going to wrap up the message of today by thanking you very much for your presence, for your comments, for your help, Fabiola, Mark, um, Louis, and also Fred Gouveia and many others, our friend John De Rosa who is here, our dear Steve Shepard who kindly did the voiceover of this message and many others. You know, there's a lot for us to learn. I'm going to leave you with this final message in a prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray that we get stronger in our true spiritual immunization. Father, Father God, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity of reading this message, learning from it, being immunized so we can live a stronger life as spirits. Today, we stop for a moment to meditate about our lives and pray for all those whom we pushed away in our culture of intolerance, as Emilio says, in our impatience. Please give us new strength, new opportunity to make amends, to forgive ourselves and others, to create new health. Guide us towards the opportunity of helping others all the more. As we know in this world, there are many brothers and sisters who are in true need of help spiritually and physically. May everyone who is listening to this very moment feel the shower of your loving blessings and spread them out 
to everyone in their lives, and so be it. Thank you, Fabiola, for wishing us a good weekend. We wish you too, and we wish everyone who is listening to us, live or on demand, a loving day, loving many days, the rest of our immortal lives. And you know, in a week from today, we'll have another program. We have uh, another guest who will discuss his uh, beautiful book. It's about Discover Your Purpose. Beautiful just uh, come and listen to it. The author of a book, uh, uh, Thomas Riss, is going to be here talking about it and much more. It's about, uh, as he says, quoting from Rumi, feel yourself being quietly drawn by the deeper pull of what you truly love. Oh, there are many good things coming along, Kardec Radio. What an opportunity for us. And did you know that soon, this Sunday, this Sunday on Spiritist Awareness at 8 p.m., you're going to listen to our new segment, Interrupted Youth. It's from a book that is not yet in English, but I'm bringing to you the chapters, which are amazing, about young fellows who discarnated in dramatic ways. And through the psychography of several mediums in Brazil, they came to tell their stories and the reasons why they experienced such dramatic endings. and right here at Kardec Radio. Tomorrow, Sunday, 8 p.m., we have five days of programs for you, new programs every week. Beautiful hosts, wonderful hosts who are sharing with you, with all of us, the message of the Spirit, which, by the way, is amazing. Thank you very much, dear listener. Let us enjoy our days in hope and faith always. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio, broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.kardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.